It's fall in Ontario, it's raining, but I'm excited. Why? It's steelhead time, my very favorite time of the year. I've made my way to Walkerton, Ontario, I've rented a room, and I've hired one of the top guides in Ontario. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. On this week's show, we're fishing the Saugeen River near the town of Walkerton, Ontario. Walkerton is a drive-to location that is only two hours from Toronto and the U.S. border. Exploring Ontario's steelhead opportunities need not be expensive. On this trip, I rented a nice, comfortable room at the Best Western in Walkerton. I also hired a guide. The guide I hired is Grindstone Outfitter owner and head guide John Falk. John has guided on this river for decades and is one of the most knowledgeable fly fishers in the business. Watch as John shows us the swinging technique we're going to be using on this trip. When you're swinging a fly, you basically need to read the water. You want to look at the river and look at the water so that you're picking out the deeper sections of the pool that you want to fish. There'll be troughs down the middle, but that water is definitely going to have a darker coloration to it. So it tells you where you're going to swing but the next thing that you want to do is you want to kind of adjust your swing to make sure that you're covering the water appropriately. The easiest way to do it is to make that forward cast, put a mend in your line, let it swing through. But we can add to the mending by the size of the mend, for introducing more slack, so the current will push the sink tip down a little bit deeper. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at the depth of the pool. This is the dark water. So it, this is a nice slow pool. We're gonna put in a cast, a nice slow, easy swing. The water speed will tell you how fast you need to work. And then allow yourself just to swing it down through. If we wanna get the fly deeper into this pool, we're actually gonna add a little more slack on our mend. So we're gonna cast across the pool, and then we're gonna put a bigger mend in, maybe two, that's gonna give us more depth. Take the rod forward quickly and then pull back slightly. I now have the fly very, very deep and it's actually covering the bottom. Strip it back, way back, way back here, way too, too far, right there. Just strip that slowly into the boat like you're fishing it and then pick it up and cast it again so it's swinging. Oh, fish on. There you go, good fish stuff. Fish on, yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good leaping fish. Way to go, Bill. Yeah. It followed it. It was right in front of that rock and it followed it. And he's just about into my backing. That's all right. Just play him out in the pool. You're good. Yep. Okay, Bill, just lock in. I'm going to hop out of the boat. Okay. Okay, Bill, you be ready because this fish is probably going to take off when I go to net it, okay? So you be ready for that with a loose yep. drag, okay? Just like that. That's exactly what we were talking That's about. That's nice silver fish. He doesn't like your cologne. No. <laughs> Beautiful fish. It's a nice female. Yeah, it's a hen. Yeah. Outstanding, John. Outstanding. Well done, Bill. <laughs> well done. There's always the question of the net. Right. Why do you use a net? Right. Right. And you, it's very apparent to you right now. I got out of the boat, the fish comes around, put it in the net. The best thing you could do is never lift a fish out of the water in the net. Right. We're catch and release. This is a soft mesh bag. It's right. not going to harm them. Right. But we're not fumbling fish, dropping them, pulling them up on That's rocks, right. yeah. doing anything like that. This fish is very well looked after right, right. now. Right. Okay. So we have absolute control. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right, Bill. Ready, done. There you go. Beautiful silver steelhead. Good. Okay. Now we got our photos. 
Haven't hurt the fish at all? Not at all, not at all. Very gentle. Look at all silver that fish is, oh my goodness. Cradling the fish. And there she goes. And away we go. More steelhead action when we return. So at Grindstone Outfitters, we do a, a variety of guiding throughout the province of Ontario, the south central region mainly. We provide a spring steelhead run. We do uh, trout, trout waters for brown trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, so the resident trout population. During the summer months, we're in smallmouth bass, muskie, and still fishing for trout as well. And then as the fall approaches, we have that early salmon run, and we get into the steelhead run towards the end of the season, which is where we are now. During the winter months, I spend my time on the saltwater flats chasing bonefish, chasing permit. We also do some Atlantic salmon trips to the east coast of Canada and I do steelhead trips to the west coast of Canada. So I cover a lot of Canada, a lot of different parts of the world, and it's a great time. John, you've instructed me to keep the rod tip low. Why is that? There's two different ways you can fish this. So over and above your mend, when you're presenting the fly down into the pool on a little bit slacker line and a slower presentation, when your rod tip is high, that's great when you're in like a lot of boulders and, and stuff like that. But when you've got a nice trough like this down the center of the river, I want you to get that fly nice and down, nice and deep, sorry, and, and down to the bottom. That's where the fish are. They're gonna be within that bottom foot. Right. A river. So when you're going forward, your rod tip is fairly high. So after you make your mend, your rod's fairly high. And then as you follow it through, you just slowly lower your rod down into the water. And that keeps your fly down nice and deep. So what you're telling me is the fish are le laying near the bottom. They're not up? Near the bottom, yeah. but not on the bottom. You've no. never seen a steelhead with scars on the, on the underside no, of the No, but they, they stay low to the bottom. Yeah, so they're not right on the bottom. They're just above it. So basically, as long as your fly is in that, that bottom foot, foot and a half of water, you're presenting it right to the fish. Right. And presentation is Huge. name of the game. Exactly. As long as you do all the right things, Bill, the right mend, the right presentation, the speed of the fly is important, and the height of your rod is important. As long as you do all of the right things, you're going to catch fish. Fish on. There you go. Nice. Oh, he's oh, still there, yeah. Beautiful. What a leap, what a leap. You called it, John. You said right in the bottom of the pool. Beautiful. Oh my, oh nice. my, my. Rod to the right, Bill. Pull your rod to the right. That's it. Always make them fight against your rod. Okay, I'm gonna take you over towards the grass in the bank okay. here so I can get out of the boat and land him. Okay. Okay, you just do your thing and let him do his thing. Just keep a tight line on him. Got Walk it. him like a dog. Yeah, just oh, he's let gonna him jump run, again. Though. Yeah. Beautiful jump. Beautiful. Win one more time. That's probably one of the best fighting steelheads I've had. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> great. That's he's, spectacular. He's a little upset. What a great day, Bill. Yeah. This is good fish. This still this this guy's still pretty green. Oh yeah. Yeah. He might even jump again. Bill, this is why we fly fish, for the fight of the fish, right? Yeah. So enjoy every second of it. You got it. Outstanding fish. Great big leaps. The fall fish are completely different than the spring fish. Spring fish bulldog a lot, They'll, they might get one jump. I've got three good high leaps out of this fish, and that's just... And then it's also the speed that the fish runs. Oh, the fish right? is a lot faster at this time of year. Yeah, they fight a lot harder, a lot faster. The other thing, Bill, that uh, you might want to note, there's that connection of your sink tip to your fly line. You know, if the fish is still very hot, don't bring that into your rod tip. Okay. Okay. Don't bring it into the rod tip until you think we're pretty well ready to, to right. land this fish. So, okay, pick up on him. I'm trying to get his head up, John. Good man, yeah. He's in the net. <laughs> wow. Way to go, wow. Bill. Wow. Look at that. Oh, that's a good fish. That's an awesome fish. Awesome fish. Way to go, man. Yeah. There you go, Bill. Look at that, folks. Isn't that beautiful? Fall steelheading like you wouldn't believe. That's a beautiful fish. 
Just a beautiful fish. Has the hook out? Yeah, back of the net. Back of the net for me, please. You got the hook out. Okay, Billy. I'll get him back in. Yep. When you're fighting big fish like steelhead, a steelhead can give you a very chaotic fight. In other words, they can rip line on you, they can turn, they can run back at the boat. So it's very important that you have your drag set just perfectly. So on a longer line, when you're fighting those fish at a distance, you can have a little bit tighter drag. But as that line gets, or as that fish gets closer to the boat, you might want to loosen off on your drag a little bit. A short line and a big burst from a fish like that in chaos will break your tippet and or can blow a hook on you. So the best thing to do, loosen off in your drag. That way when your guide gets out to net the fish, if the fish blows on you, he can run. He can take that line. You'll still keep that fish on. It's just a lighter drag so he can slide out a little bit easier. Fish on. There you go. Good fish too, good fish. To the darker fly, like you said, John. Just play him cool, okay, Bill? Yep. Get your rod up a little higher because you got a lot of boulders down there. He's coming at me. Okay, Bill, I'm gonna take you way over to the left bank. That's where we're okay. gonna land this. Oh, man. Get your rod a little higher, a little higher. Got lots of rocks in here. Okay. You want to keep as much line out of the water as possible. Okay. But if the fish comes to the surface, please roll your rod to rod low. Okay? Rod low when if he comes up. Yep. Yeah. We hit it, hit the run exactly right. Fish are still moving up. We've had a little bit of rain. Everything is working in our favor right now. Oh man. Every I haven't even I, I, other than when he jumped, I haven't got a real good look at him yet. Well, every time he comes out of that current, he heads back out on yeah, you. Yeah, he doesn't like coming out of that current. No, nope. there he comes. Oh, beautiful fish, Bill. He's not a real big fish. No, just lots of He's spunk. He's got a lot of heart. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of heart, yeah. He's probably going to go for another it's run. It's a nice fish, though. It's a good eight-pound eight fish anyway. Oh, yeah. Right? Whoa, whoa, look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, my. <laughs> Woohoo! Wow, what a beauty. It's not what a lot of length, beauty. Bill, but a lot of girth. But it's, it's thick. It's, it's like a this, real thick this fish. Thick. What a gorgeous fish. Look at the chrome. Look at the chrome. Isn't that nice? Nice wow. and thick. Look at how thick it is underneath. Wow. Okay, Bill. Big, back. big shoulders on it. Back of the net. Give him some water. Give him some water. You know what? I really want to take a personal photograph. Okay. Of you That's... holding this fish. All right. That's a good shot for me. Okay. Thank okay. you. Let's get him ready. Just give me a second. Let me grab the camera. Yep. Keep his head in the water for a second. Yep. Oh, what a beautiful fish, Bill. Way to go. Okay, Bill, I'm gonna let him go. I'm gonna take him over the clear water because I've silted it up here a little bit. What a beautiful fish. Good and thick. Look at how thick that is. Wow. My goodness. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Big, big fight, big head shakes. Loved every minute of it. Isn't that gorgeous? Well done, Bill. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> John, we're swinging flies today. What are we actually using and why are we using them? There's a, there's a variety of patterns that I like to go through, Bill, when we're fishing with some of these runs and pools. I wanted to get down a little bit deeper, so I tied in one of my own patterns. It's called a sunburst. You can see it's bright orange and yellow. But you also notice that there's lead eyes on it. So that little bit of weight is just enough to take us down that extra foot. From there, we went down to another pool, and I put on the uh, general practitioner. It's a little tube fly. You can see the tube underneath here. But you can imagine this is a little hollow plastic tube. It's virtually unweighted. So the weight of the fly now is a little bit less. The fly rides up higher in the pool. Therefore, we can push that fly back deeper into the pool, slower water conditions, without it sinking too low and snagging up on right. us. And then we got into so, a very large pool for those last two uh, two fish and we went to a really heavy intruder so this actually has a wire shank body so you've got weight there 
The weight of the hook adds a little, but again, a set of dumbbell eyes, and that takes us down really deep. So you've got the weight of the shank, the eyes, the hook combined, it's all wire, it's going down deep, and it has that big dark profile that we like to see in the water. You notice all the materials on all of these flies, there's a little bit of a breeze, it's fluttering in the breeze, it's going to flutter in the current as well. That's really necessary for attracting the big fish. We'll be right back. The advantages of a drift boat, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our people, the fly anglers of this time, are actually getting a little older. I've got a lot of clients that are in their elderly years, so they can't very readily wade a river, but they can sure enjoy a river covering 14 kilometers or 16 kilometers on a drift. In that drift boat, they don't have to move. I do all the movement for them, and it's gonna put them on all the pools. They're gonna have a great time. The other advantages, different waters that you can fish. There's a lot of places you can't wade, and I can certainly get into those places with the drift boat. It gives us access to a lot of deep water that's unwadeable. It gives us access to a lot of, of areas of the river that are and, you know, encompassed by private property. So we can cover a lot more water with a drift boat. And for those guys who like to wade, we can actually get you out of the boat at different pools and we can wade those pools. Most of the time, you're gonna have the water all to yourself. The setup today, Bill's using a single hand rod. This is a nine foot eight weight Helios rod, Orvis Helios. And when Bill told me he wanted to fish a single hand rod, basically it tells me or directs me how I want to set up his rod. So what I've done is I've set Bill up with a 10 foot sink tip that's attached to the end of Bill's line with a loop connector. And it's just a monofilament loop. Then we get into our 10 foot sink, sink section and this tapers down so it's a little bit smaller at the bottom. They, get, they provide you with a monofilament section and then that's gonna attach into your tippet. From there, I've broken it down into two sections. This sec, the first section of tippet I put on is actually 20 pound test. It gives me something to tie my tippet to. And then we've got a foot and a half of 15 pound test tippet material and that's directly to the fly. So your entire tippet section coming off of the sink tip, give or take three to four feet. That's a good length for it. And that's gonna be right into your extra super fast tapered leader. There are other sink rates that are available, slow sink, medium sink, fast sink, and then you get into the real fast sink stuff. I prefer the fast sink stuff so it, get, it allows me, with mending, to get the fly down deep in the pools and cover the structure that I wanna get into. Fish on. Oh, nice, Bill. Way to oh, go. Oh, my God. Look at that. Way to go. I'm just going to let you fight that fish right from here, okay? Okay. Whoa. Away he goes again. Officially into my backing. Is this why you love steelhead, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm into my backing. Okay. I'll fall him down nice and easy. Boy. Deep, deep hole. Boy. The fighting, the fighting ability at this time of year is just unbelievable. They are so energetic. This guy's gonna come up, I can tell. Yeah, you just be prepared and ready yeah. to roll your rod, okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting out of the boat. Okay. That's it, sideways pressure. Now I've lost him in the glare. He's right okay, here, that's he a really nice fish, Bill. And still very hot. Oh, wow, this is a big fish. You just watch that, um, the loop on the end of your sinking yep. tip. Yep. Okay. I wouldn't get that into my rod tip yet, if I were you. Yeah, it's still a ways away. <laughs> well, but this fish is still very hot. Yeah. So. Okay, rod over to the right. Lift up on the fish when you can now. It's not gonna come in easily, that's for sure. Oh, that's such a beautiful fish. Bolt chrome. Now remember, when I go to net this fish, Bill, it might take off again. Yeah. So you be prepared for that. I'll be prepared for it, yeah. You can lift up on the fish now. Oh man. Bring her head up nice and easy. Easy. Slide your rod over my way a little. Lift up. Oh, yes! Oh. Yes! <laughs> Billy? Oh, look at that. You get a 30 inch pin. 
<laughs> 30 inch steel. Oh everybody. my goodness, look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get out of the boat, John. We gotta get a picture of this. Yeah. This is this is a rarity as far as, as steelhead at this size. Fly is still in the mouth of the fish. Fly still in the mouth. Oh yep. my. There we go. Flies out. What an awesome fish, Bill. Look at that, folks. Wow. She's gonna go pretty quick, yeah. right? Look at that. Look That's at gorgeous. that. John, I've had a wonderful, wonderful day here. The fishing's been outstanding. Your instruction has been right on. Uh, I wanna thank you. Thank John Valk and Grindstone Outfitters for this day. It's been wonderful. For more information on today's show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to GoFishingOntario.com Orvis Sporting Traditions Rio Products Superfly Fly Fishing Made Easy